Hey everyone, I hope you're well. The new trailer has dropped and there's tons of hidden details, so I thought we'd jump in and I'll show you all of these, with the first being this little blue supply bin. Yes, a brand new loot type for supply bins. This is really awesome. Up next, we have these first changes. So Capital City will be split into two different sections and I'll explain more in the end of the video because Apex Legends also released a blog post explaining the different changes. Up next, here's another look at the split. There's a big lava fissure in between Capital City now. It's going to offer a completely different feel. Some people are going to love this change. Some people are going to hate it. Obviously, Capital City is the biggest area in Wild's Edge. So this is a big, big change coming. So next up, we have another look at Capital City's destruction. Then we have these. These are weapon racks which are in a new area on the map which will be added and I'll explain that in a second what it's called or where it is. These are basically guaranteed weapon drops so you can always land on them and ensure that you get a weapon. So up next we have the new harvester. Now this is near fuel depot. This is really important because it opens up a really big bottleneck area in the map which got a lot of people killed before. So this is going to be changed and I'll explain after the gameplay trailer overview why this has happened and I'll take a closer look at the map changes with the new EA blog which explains it. As you can see here this is where Lava Fisher was. It's right next to Capital City. Then we have the legends just waiting around. These are the first look at the new legend skins for season four. This is the Wraith legendary skin. And then up next we can see Revenant for the first time and Revenant's abilities. You'll be able to see those in just a second, which is super, super exciting. I'll explain them as we go. So first things first, Revenant's abilities have as his ultimate, he can create a death totem, and when people walk through that, they will turn into shadows from the shadow event from Fight or Fright. First though, a quick look at Rafe's legendary skin alongside what might be the tier 100 skin for the flat line this time. Two very robotic looking skins, they are very, very, very awesome. And then up next we have Lifeline skin, another cyborg looking skin. Here's a closer look that we didn't really get to see. It actually looks a lot cooler, but then we have this Watson skin, which is even more awesome. Look at those legs, they are very crazy. And then this is the Vault SMG, which was not announced, but here it is in the gameplay trailer. Here are the iron sights. Looks like it's coming, which is super, super exciting. Nobody expect, well, people thought it might come, but it was, wasn't announced. So here is Revenant's ultimate ability, the Death Totem. So he uses this and then legends turn into shadows as they walk by it. When they die, they respawn at the totem, I assume. Revenant's passive allows him to climb higher. And as you can see there, Revenant can also throw a little bomb, which kind of does this air of effect damage. I'm not sure what it does, but you'll see in a second that the effect lasts a long time and he actually throws this little bomb from out of his arm, which is really cool. And we'll also see that the double tap is still in the game, which is another interesting thing to see. And this is Revenant's finisher, very, very awesome. I mean, this is just very cool. And here's another look at World's Edge. We go along and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of small changes here. This is the new Sentinel Sniper. We don't know how it works exactly yet, but it seems you use a shield battery to charge it up and then you fire it. That is what a blog said on the PlayStation website at least. So you use shield batteries, charge it up, it builds more power and it becomes a very powerful sniper. Here's a Gibby skin, perhaps an exclusive because it's right next to the new Mirage Iron Man exclusive skin. And then we have this double tap on the Scout 2 that still exists, a new Bloodhound skin, perhaps another exclusive. And then we have a few other little things here and there have a look at Revenant and that's pretty much the trailer. First here's a look at Revenant's legendary skin. Look at how thin his body is. His hitbox is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> so that's the trailer. Now let's take a look at the new blog which explains some of the map changes. So I'm going to read you through this blog now and show you the different versions of the new map. 
and if you want to read it yourself i'll put a link in the description so this is from jason mccord the design director on apex legends so what is the main goal of the season 4 map update so they say the main goal is on the design side to get players to make new decisions by the end of a season you probably have your favorite spots or spots to land you might prefer to rotate out of your drop location our goal as designers is to offer new ways to approach the game and in case of the map so that each drop rotation and gunfight feels as fresh as possible so here are a few things we're doing in Season 4 to hopefully achieve that. The Planet Harvester. As you drop into World's Edge, you'll immediately see the Planet Harvester, which Hammond Robotics are using to gather precious metals from the core of the planet for reasons unknown. The red beam can be seen from the entire island, giving players a better sense of directionality and understanding the centre of the map. Anyone who has played Season 3 of World's Edge knows that Fuel Depot can be scary, especially in late game. Because this point of interest is in the centre of the map, changing this location gives players more opportunity to explore the new content more often. and perhaps more importantly, opening up the area for less bottlenecks. With its large multi-level design, the Planet Harvester is unlike anything else on World's Edge and brings exciting new gameplay options to the game. Fights are largely self-contained as squads will tend to enter the fight through the long hallways that lead to the center of the structure. This should make third parties a little more predictable and hopefully easier to defend against. Considering the unstable volcanic nature of World's Edge, it's no surprise that the Planet Harvester has caused giant lava filled faults to rupture, splitting Capital City in two. Capital City was the biggest point of interest in Season 3, getting the most action right out of the ship. By sending in the fissure straight through Capital City and creating some dead space in between, we essentially split this area into two separate zones for players to land in and loot, Fragment East and Fragment West. The large fissure can only be crossed in two locations, a zipline or a fallen skyscraper bridge. This allows some teams some breathing room to control one side after the drop, reducing the risk of running into third parties from the other side of the city. So yeah, that's pretty cool. The updraft. The original design of the new fissure had players drop to their death if they had the misfortune of missing a jump. We wanted this gap to matter, for players to fight across and control the bridges is the only way across. This let certain legends shine and created some intense firefights when the ring was approaching. The problem was a fatal fall felt too punishing. The last thing we wanted was players avoiding the new map changes because they had an unfair experience. Now if you jump into the fissure that cuts through Capital City, you'll slowly be carried back up from the heated pressurized air and allowed to coast across the land on the other side. This is balanced by two things. First, you take 25 damage from the intense heat and embers floating inside. This is a consistent amount of damage every time you drop back down. Second, you travel very, very slowly in third person while moving in the updraft. You're essentially a flying loot pinata for any nearby enemy players. Competitive integrity is always a big factor while designing new features and our main concern with this feature was allowing players to escape fights they are losing by sliding into the fissure and sailing away. Way. We think the damage and slow rise make players respect the gap while in a firefight while in calmer moments allowing players to have fun and experiment with this new space without the risk of immediate death. Then we have Survey Camp. This is a new small point of interest in the snowy fields between the epicenter and Skyhook. This is another camp created to relieve the pressure of locations like Capital City, Refinery and Epicenter. It also creates some potentially new rotations like moving through the train tunnel to get to Skyhook. Because this is a small point of interest we wanted to give it a little more more of a draw. For this reason, we created weapon racks. These are guaranteed weapons placed on racks in the small buildings of survey camp. You'll recognize them from training or the firing range. This should give players who prioritize a good weapon over a premier drop location a new decision to make. So, yep, that's pretty much it. Season 4 is dropping tomorrow. I'm super excited. Make sure to subscribe because I'll be posting all of the new changes and updates right here as soon as they are shown. One of the biggest things this trailer doesn't really show is the potential balancing changes and I'm really hoping there are some big balancing changes in Season 4. I hope that some of the lower tier legends get a bit of a boost. I'd love to see Bloodhound and Mirage get some love. We already saw the dummies Big Day Mirage ult. If Mirage gets that, that would be awesome. And obviously we have some new weapons coming. Well, perhaps the vault will come at launch or maybe later on. We saw it in the World's Edge gameplay, which makes me believe we may get two weapons on launch. But we'll have to see. It's just tomorrow. So that's really cool. I really hope that the weapons get a bit balanced. The scout needs a bit of a push down. But other than that, yeah, season four is going to be so great. I cannot wait. The patch notes should go live alongside the update at around 10am PST on February 4th. So thank you everyone for watching. Let me know what you're most excited for about Season 4. I'll see you in the comments. Cheerio!